Hello guys, Mathemosso here, also known as Chris Lies Entertainment, and welcome to this tutorial on how to wig hair using the NURBS system. This is the same type of hair that I used in Project Starlight, uh, which you can see here. Before we jump in, however, I also want to give credit to Jan Scopes for his tutorial on how to use NURBS to create hair to begin with. You can also see we both have the bones and the nerves. You can see that it is like using points to both dictate the shape and size of the entire mess. But as it stands, you cannot just bind the bones to the mess and call it a day. To make the mess so you can wig it, go first to Object, Convert, and then Mesh. Now if you go into edit mode, you will see that we now have individual vertices for each point of the mess, instead of using the NURBS more dynamic system. To make it easier to wig, we're also going to jump to the modifiers and go to decimate. For this, we go to on subdivide. I also like to take this moment also then to go to the viewport overlays and turn on the wireframe so we can see what we're doing. Now set iterations down to four which I find is a very good number and you can see that we now have a pretty workable mess. I also like to take this opportunity then have the bonds exactly lined up to each of these edges to make sure that they will deform correctly. Now since we have used decimate which will now apply I like to take this opportunity then just to add a subdivision and I like to set the render to be the exact amount to what we have just decimated the mesh by to give the same kind of smooth look to everything. I would advise against setting the exact same value for render and viewport with this because I have noticed some extreme performance de degradation on my workstation. Particularly, it, um, it kind of soft locks the entire system. Now there's a couple of ways you can weight the mesh to the bones. One of the most common ways is going control P and then go to armature deform with automatic rates. Personally, I like to have a little bit more control, so I like to go with empty groups and then do it manually. Okay, now that I have weighted the mesh to the bones, we can now go into pose mode and you will see that it is now fairly rigged and we can now control the bones as we wish. However, that is not the end of the tutorial. Uh, what if you want to add some jiggle physics to say the last two bones of the wig? To do that, we're going to be using the wiggle add-on by Steve 3D, which is a very good way to add jiggle physics to things like bones, wires, and things like that. So you want to download the latest and greatest version of the Wiggle 2 add-on from the GitHub page, which I'll provide as a link in the description. From there, you will need to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then you can click on Install, and then you just navigate to where the plugin is. But since I've already got it installed, we'll skip that step. Now you press N on the keyboard and go to Animation, and you can see that for this, the scene has been muted. So we'll just click on Enable Scene, and then click on Bone Tail. And from here, we can change like the stiffness. The higher it is, the less movement there will be, so 500. We also have controls for like how much stretch we want it, if we want to have some stretch to the mesh, uh, which is, I think, particularly useful for things like wires. Damp, uh, which I'm not entirely sure, I've not really used that. Gravity and wind is self-explanatory. Wind will require a wind entity that kind of blows in a certain direction. And we can also set it for collision, so this can be anything from like collections up to actual messes. So like if you have like a head mess like I have on Project Starlight, you're gonna have so it just kind of collides on like the cheek. It will not clip through, which is very desirable. We also have global utility, so we can actually select these two and copy the same settings between each other. And this is where we can actually tell if we want to have the physics loop and have the wiggle baked if we want to. So now that we have it all set up. We should now be able just to press play and you'll see that there's a bit of wiggle now on the hair. I'm actually going just to turn that down to 200 and copy that. We're also going to just disable wireframe now so we because we don't need it. And now you can see we have now fully workable and you can now use this for your own animation. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this has been useful for you and that you can use this to wig your own characters. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.